Welcome back to the Wasteland Legends. So today we are going to be going over the controls of Fallout 1 and Fallout 2. I'm also going to have some helpful little uh, guides at the very end. They're going to be little pictures that are actually from the game. So at the very end, stick around for that so you can see these cool little pictures. Take a screenshot, save them if you need them. And uh, without any further ado, let's get right into this week's member video. Opening up Fallout 1, we will be greeted with this pretty basic, pretty standard game menu. It's got everything you need, an intro, a new game, a saved game, so something you already had. Some settings you can go through, um, pretty simple, and then we also have some screen settings, so you can mess around at the screen, make it perfect to your standards. I'm going to be honest, I'm kind of an idiot when it comes to screen settings like this. I've always been a console user, but I do see that you can actually change the little side art. Um, which is what your Pip-Boy pretty much is, and that's that's really cool. I really like that feature. Um, other than that, there's credits and then also exit, but let's load a game. Alrighty, so first up, we got this little red cursor. That'll choose where you want to move. If you right-click, you can get this little arrow, and that will actually allow you to click your character or to like spin them around, or you can go to other characters and tap them. Um, using the red cursor, you can move. If you tap it once, you walk, but if you tap it twice, you can actually run so that is very handy especially if you need to get somewhere fast just tapping them with the arrows you can talk to them you know do whatever you want you can actually go to a barter menu and you can select some items out of your inventory bring it into the little uh, trade bar is what I like to call it select how many you want and then you can uh, put it up for sale and then you can also take whatever item out of their inventory that you want put it on their little trade bar and then you can try to get them to a level amount of caps. So try to get them even. Um, the only way it'll work for the trading is if it's the worth the value or you're getting screwed out of the deal. That's really the only chance. You can't screw them out of the deal. Um, this little ask me about, it really doesn't work. So don't even bother. There's like three things that you can do. Not three things. I'm exaggerating, of course. And then there's this review. And you can go through what you talked about in case you need to. Uh, remember what you said to that nerd um, you know we got the walking and then the looking and if you actually hold it you can open a selection of options so we can hold it and we can talk to them we can look at them we can open their inventory or we can see what skills they have and you can pretty much do all of that really easily just by holding it and then scrolling down and selecting you can, of course, go to other places and select items on the ground, pick them up if you need to. Um, and then let's go to our inventory. So if you click this red button, it's going to show the two items that you are holding. I'm holding a stim pack and an alien blaster, so I can just swap between the two. And then we have a combat. If you click the weapon, you can instantly go to combat. Those little buttons up there, the green ones, are your action points. So those are very handy to keep uh, pay attention to because you need to when you're fighting. Then there's a turn, which will end your turn, and then combat, which of course ends combat. Over here, we can uh, actually hold down what we're holding, and it'll allow us to use VATS. So that little target thing, that's our VATS, and that'll allow us to, of course, use VATS. You can uh, hold it again, and it'll be back to single fire, but if you need to reload when you hold it, it can also open up the reload option, which you just tap it, and it'll reload. And I believe it's standard uh, two action points to reload for everything, so keep in mind when you're in combat. Opening our inventory, we can scroll down through the items that we have. If you hold them like we do characters, it'll give you a list of options. You can drop it, you could grab it, which grabbing it means using it. And then you can also inspect it and it'll tell you all about the lore. Or you can click that cancel button and that'll obviously cancel your action. The armor, pretty much the same thing. That's your armor slot. You can move things in and out of there depending on what armor you want. And then also the same thing for the two items. You get item one and item two. You can use those for weapons or whatever really you want. Going to this circle button, that is our options. You can save your game, load your game. Pretty much you save it, it'll be like, you wanna overwrite this? Yes, you can rename it if you want. It'll show you, it's so easy. I didn't even think about going over it as the tutorial. Cancel, go to load game, choose whatever game save you wanna load, and boom, you're in a game. Go to preferences to change all of your settings. That's pretty much what preferences means, is it's all your game settings. These are all very handy and uh, they pretty much is rudimentary and as straightforward as they can be. If you don't know what they mean, 
you know, just read them, look it up. I could even help you in the comments if you need to. But uh, pretty, pretty simple. Combat speed is probably the only thing that you're not going to get. That's literally how fast people fight in combat. So you can turn that up, and it just makes everything a lot, lot smoother. Um, you have to turn that up, I'm pretty sure, because if you don't, you're going to be playing this game for like 10 extra hours, folks. And then you can exit the game, of course, and done. So um, going over here to this red button, that's our skill dex. That'll show us all of our skills that we can use. Um, sneak, of course, you know, shows sneak right there, which is very handy. But if you try to run with sneak, like all other fallouts, it'll cancel your sneaking. Um, and then you got lockpick. You know, you just tap that. If you need to lockpick something, you tap that lockpick button and you tap it on something that you would like to lockpick. You can also do like first aid and tap on yourself. Heal yourself up a little bit if you need. Um, I have a stim pack, so I really don't need to because it doesn't do too much health. But uh, that is an option. Going to character, it'll show us our character, our special stats, all of that, our traits, our perks. Going over here to the skills, you can um, you know, upgrade them if you need to when you level up. There's little plus and minus signs that'll obviously give you more or less of those skills. You can't take them away once you've put them in completely and locked it, but you can do it in the moment. So before you close your character, make sure you are sure you like those skills. Going down there, that's you know your little stats helps you out. Uh, but you can also print all of this if you'd like to. I don't know why you would, and I don't really know what that even means. I'm assuming you're just printing it, so I don't know why you would even do that. Going over to your pit boy, we can open that John up, and there is an alarm that is going to be for all of your waiting. So you can wait for you know whatever amount of time until you're healed, all that nonsense. Opening up status that'll show you all the places that you have unlocked. You know you found them, and then you can also go to whatever quests you need to do for those places very handy data that's just going to be you know everything that you've learned in the lore like you've downloaded from holotapes all that kind of stuff going over to auto maps it's literally just a really rudimentary strange map that i can't really understand very well because i'm a dummy and you can look through all of the maps of different places archives that's going to be your little cutscenes. they save those for you so that's very handy especially if you want to rewatch them because they're so cool and then you can go to close. Obviously, that's gonna shut off your pit boy. Running over to this red area. Red is a place to exit. Green is a place to go to another like selection in that map. So you just move around, you click that little uh, triangle button and that'll actually allow you to go to where you want. And then also we have this town world which will show you, um, you know, your map for where you're at as well as those blue areas that'll select and automatically make your character run to those places on the map. Right over here you can see we can just run around, but that's just how you kind of go into any real place. You just click that little triangle button, fill it in, and you're good to go. Opening up Fallout 2, pretty much the exact same thing here. You got an intro, new game, load game, options, credits, and exit. Game preferences, almost exactly the same as Fallout 1. And then also there are some screen settings. You know, you can mess around with these. These aren't exactly the same because there is a way where you can change your Pip-Boy a little bit more. And um, I actually went with the little wristband one. So it's pretty much the exact same one from Fallout 1, except there's like a different option. Instead of like a rusty, it's like a silvery. So that's pretty cool. I went ahead and turned our pathfinding range all the way up because when you walk around in this game, like if you try to select somewhere far where you want to walk, your character's not going to know how because they're numb nuts. So if you put up their pathfinding range, that should help you. Right here is your Pip Boy art. You can tap that, you get nothing. You get the silver one, or you get the like the watch band is what I like to call it. It looks like a belt buckle kind of watch band kind of thing. And that one's just really cool. I really like how it looks. And it kind of matches the Fallout 2 kind of vibe. So I went ahead with that and loaded up a game. So pretty much folks, Fallout 2 is exactly the same as Fallout 1 with settings. There's like three differences. Um, I don't even know what they are, but there's like very, very subtle differences. You know, your options, everything else is exactly the same as Fallout 1's pretty much. Mess around with your combat speed, all that if you need to. Get out of there, and then you can go um, done. Opening up your skill decks, exactly the same skill decks, just looks a little nicer. Um, then we have character, which is the exact same thing. We got perks. Everything's the same. A little bit of tiny differences, but not with like how you navigate it or anything. It just looks a little nicer, a little easier to follow as well. 
then opening up our pit boy we can see you know you got your waiting you can't wait in this location because this location is dumb but then there's status everything guys it's pretty much the exact same thing if you have a keen eye you'll notice there's actually one difference and it's the map that'll automatically allow you to just go to the map you're at and if you have a motion sensor it'll show you the ops not really just the ops it'll show you pretty much anyone in the location um, and it'll make it a little easier to navigate and find who you need to, I guess. Or you can go find someone to go rob or whatever. However you want to play this game, it's not up to me. Um, but yeah, everything else is pretty much the exact same. It just looks a little nicer because it is uh, a little newer and they had a little more to do with the game. But yeah, trading. But there's also, with your companions, there is another setting. It's called Combat Control right here. You can change everything you want about in combat. This is very handy and it allow you to choose exactly how you want your uh, little companions to fight. Very handy. That's something we needed in Fallout 1, but unfortunately we didn't get. You can do that if you'd like with Fallout mods, I'm sure. But um, right here we're just playing vanilla and a little bit of graphic inducing mods that just make it a little better. Okay, clicking our combat. There's one more setting I need to show you, and that is VATS. That's VATS right there. You can hit wherever you want, including the groin. So that is very nice and a very cool option. Wish we had those in the later games. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much all of the settings in Fallout 1 and 2. Members, I appreciate you watching this. This was super uh, fun to make, you know. I get to show you guys all the settings in Fallout 2 and 1. And it's just, you know, I hope it helps because you guys need to play Fallout 1 and 2. They're absolutely great games. And if you follow my one video I made, it's like uh, how to play Fallout 1 and 2 on your phone. Um, it's going to show you how to do those. It's really, it might not be the best guide because I, in, it was so hard for me, okay? I'm going to be honest, it was so hard to do that because I am technologically unadvanced. I am not that advanced when it comes to technology, especially PC games. But if you can follow that, if I could do it, you can do it. So uh, go ahead and try to give those Fallout 1 and 2 games a play because they are so fun, guys. But my members, I'm going to destroy your names real quick. We got Ilias Kortab, Pakun, Adam Miller. Muffs and Poor G Tire Bite. Thank you folks so much for, uh, you know, donating your money for me. I really appreciate that. It means so much to me, and I'm glad I get to give you guys custom content. Like I said in that one community post, you should always check my community posts. Go to community posts, members only. Check those out. I have one, um, and I want you guys to check that out. Check them all out. Vote for your next videos and all of that. And I really appreciate you watching this video, folks. Thank you so much for watching. And of course, may the wasteland treat you with peace and prosperity.